Good morning everybody and welcome to another week of King's Kids Online. Thank you so much for joining with us this morning and um, yeah we're so excited to um, be with you again and to learn more about God. I'm also so excited because guess what? It is almost the summer holidays, which means no more learning from home, which means we had done fabulously well at um, managing all of our learning activities in our homes with mummies and daddies or whoever's been doing them with you. So well done to all of you for all your hard work. And we hope and pray that you have a really enjoyable, really blessed summer holidays. And um, yeah, we are looking forward to back to school in August, but we're not gonna think about that just yet. So well done everybody. And um, yeah, let's just start off by praying together. Father God, we are just so thankful for another opportunity to meet together online, to learn more about you and to praise your grace and glorious name. Thank you for all of our boys and girls and their families and for everybody who's joining us this morning from our church family. And we just, we pray that this will be a time of blessing and a time where we can learn more about you. And so Lord God, we do ask that you will please open our hearts and minds to your word this morning. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, time for our first song. And this is a song we sang a few weeks back, and I think April had picked it as her favourite song that she had ever learned in King's Kids because it talks about God's faithfulness. And what that means is that all through history, God keeps his promises. God does what he says he's going to do. And so this song talks about Noah, and it talks about Moses, and it talks about the guy we're going to be learning about today, which is David. So hope you enjoy singing it, and um, we will chat to you again afterwards. So all through history, God has been faithful. Noah built the most enormous boat That kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him away our sin so we could get to know our God again the Lord is good the Lord is strong and we will live our lives for him
that an amazing song to start off with. Boys and girls, we set you a challenge last week um, to see if you could learn the Ten Commandments. And we put a wee simplified version of it up on our page. So hopefully you had fun learning more about the Ten Commandments. And um, then Ben and Daniel shared a wee song with us that um, helps us to remember them, but also has a really important line in it that says, um, no one can keep them all, and that's why we need a saviour. And it's true, none of us can keep the Ten Commandments, and that is why God sent Jesus. And, and we're so thankful for that. So we've got some King's Kids friends this morning, just to give you a wee quick overview of our Ten Commandments. Hi everybody, we're going to do a poem about the memory verse, the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me, nor to an idol shall you bow the knee. You shall you not shall take, take the Lord God name in vain, remember the Sabbath, it's God's holy day. Honour your parents, you shall not kill, be faithful in marriage, this is God's will. You shall not steal or false witness bear of coveting, always beware. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Today we are going to be doing this week's memory verse challenge. One. Put God first. Two. Worship only God. Three. Don't use God's word in a bad way. Four. Rest on the Sabbath and keep the day holy. Five. Obey your parents. Six. Don't hurt anyone. Seven. Keep wedding promises. Eight. Don't steal. Nine. Always tell the truth. Ten. Don't wait for other pe people's stuff. Bye everyone. We miss you. Okay, thank you to everybody who helped us um, to remember our Ten Commandments there. And we hope um, that you got a wee chance to listen to the song online. And um, yeah, just it's just amazing that God loves us so very much that he sent Jesus to be our saviour because he knew that we could never keep all the Ten Commandments. Even though there are only ten of them, we still can't keep them. And yet God loved us and God sent Jesus to die for us. Boys and girls, it's now time for our quick recap of everything we have been learning so far. And isn't it amazing that we have learned such wonderful truths about God? So, um, yeah, as always, see how many you can remember. Can you say the name of God before it comes up on the screen? See how many you remember. Okay, boys and girls. Um, yeah, we're at the part of um, our Bible um, story now where we're in the book of Samuel in the Bible. It's still in the Old Testament, but we've been going through all of the books and going through it in some kind of order. And we're now at the part of the Bible where God's people have been asking God for a king. Um, and so God gave them a king and the very first king was King Saul. And our story today is about uh, whenever God was going to choose who was going to be king after Saul. You see, Saul wasn't really um, living the way he was supposed to live. He wasn't really following God. And so God was going to choose another king for his people. 
Um, so we've got a wee video coming up now to tell us a little bit more about the time when God chose David to be the next king after Saul. And it tells us a wee bit about why God chose David and then it tells us a wee bit about David's life after that. And sure, we all know some really cool things that David did. And so they're coming up in this wee video now and then we'll chat some more afterwards. God's story, David and Saul. So part of God's story is about two guys named David and Saul. And it begins like this. You may have heard of David before, the little shepherd boy who stood up to the massive warrior Goliath and won. But that isn't the whole story. In fact, that's really only a part of it. The rest of the story starts with a man named Saul. See, God wasn't very happy with Saul, Israel's first king. The people of Israel had begged God's prophet Samuel to give them a king so they could be more like other nations. God warned the Israelites they would regret it, but gave them Saul as their king. And like anyone, King Saul wasn't perfect and soon started to mess up, disobeying God and leading Israel away from him. And that's where our friend David comes in. God wanted a new king to replace Saul, so he sent Samuel to a man named Jesse. Jesse showed Samuel his eldest sons, big and strong men. Samuel thought for sure that one of these impressive boys was to be king, but God had other plans. God told Samuel to find another son, so Jesse brought in little David. Even though David was a little scrawny and had the smelly job of taking care of sheep, God told Samuel to look at more than his appearance. Samuel obeyed and anointed David, God's special way of choosing people. When David was anointed, the good spirit that had been helping Saul rule left him and was replaced with a new spirit that wouldn't leave him alone. Imagine there was a bee buzzing around in your brain that you couldn't do a thing about. That may be what it was like for Saul. Since Saul was going a little crazy, his servants had David, a great harp player, come to the palace and play music to calm the king. Now, one day, David came to bring his brothers, who were working as soldiers, some lunch. What started out as a lunch delivery soon turned into one of the most famous stories in the Bible, where tiny David took down the massive warrior Goliath with a single stone. After this, David was like a famous rock star. In fact, David was so popular that Saul worried people would start thinking David should be king instead. Saul began to try and kill, sending him on dangerous quests where any normal guy would have died and even threw a spear at his head once. Eventually, things got so bad that Jonathan, Saul's son, who David had become great friends with, helped David escape. David wandered for years trying to stay out of Saul's grasp. Twice, Saul even got so close that David had the opportunity to kill him but David refused to kill the king in charge. David continued to flee from Saul for years, and without God's blessing, Saul's army was losing to the Philistines. Soon enough, Saul's army had been defeated. Jonathan had died, and the Philistines were now chasing them. Saul was so afraid of capture that he chose to fall on his own sword instead of letting the Philistines catch him. When David heard of Jonathan and Saul's death, he went out and avenged them. And with Saul dead, David returned to Israel and at last took his place as God's new king. And that's the story of David and Saul. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made Saul king. Saul disobeyed God. God said he would take the kingdom away from Saul and chose David. David became popular. Saul became fearful of David. David had to run away. David wandered for years. Saul died. David avenged Saul. David took over as Israel's chosen king. And that's a part of God's story. Okay, boys and girls, hope you enjoyed that wee video clip. I'm sure you listened really well. And the name of God that we're gonna be thinking about today is the Lord my shepherd. And David was a shepherd. David's job was to look after his daddy's sheep and he took really good care of them. Um, where we live, um, we're next door to a field where there are lots and lots of sheep. And um, we watch the sheep in the field sometimes and they tend to follow each other around. And um, sometimes they get a wee bit stuck or sometimes they get out of the field and they're not quite sure how to get back in. And sometimes I think sheep are just a wee bit silly. But 
Thankfully, the sheep in our fields have a really lovely farmer who looks after them. And when the farmer comes into the field, all the sheep run over because they know the farmer's bringing them something yummy to eat and they know the farmer will look after them. And that got me thinking um, about how we're a little bit like sheep sometimes and um, we can sometimes follow each other instead of following our shepherd. And we're going to be thinking a wee bit later on about um, how God is the good shepherd and how he looks after his sheep. And so the Lord, my shepherd. One of the songs that David wrote is in Psalm 23, verse 1, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Okay, so God's people had asked for a king, and um, King Saul was the first king, like we said. And this story is going to be about how God is going to choose another king. And so he sends Samuel. Do you remember we talked about Samuel last week? He sends Samuel to a man called Jesse um, to find a new king for God's people. But before we learn about that, we're going to be thinking a little bit about David's life. And it says here, David was the youngest son of Jesse, and he lived in Bethlehem. He had seven older brothers. Three of them were soldiers in um, the king's army, in King Saul's army. But David tended his father's sheep. He was a shepherd. This way, little sheep, David called, and his sheep twitched their ears. They recognized David's voice. Ba ba answered the sheep. They nudged each other as they gathered together and followed David. He always took them somewhere good. Sometimes David took the sheep to a sunny pasture with delicious green grass for them to eat. He found quiet streams of clear water where they could safely drink. And on hot days, he found cool, shady places where the sheep could lie down, chew their cud and take a nap. David rubbed their noses with oil first to keep the flies away. While the sheep rested, David played his lyre, which is a bit like a harp, and sang to them. David loved God, and all his life he wrote and sang songs to God to praise him. One of David's songs begins like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures. He leads me to calm waters. He gives me new strength. Wild animals sometimes roamed through the countryside where David tended his sheep. Sometimes David had to fight off a hungry lion or bear looking for a lamb to eat. He would save the lamb and bring it back to the flock. At night, David kept his flock safe in a fenced in space with a fire to keep the wild animals away. He sounds like a really good shepherd, doesn't he? And he really loves his sheep and he's taken really good care of them. So one day, God told the prophet Samuel to go to Bethlehem to see Jesse. And um, the next king of Israel will be one of Jesse's sons, God said to Samuel. So Samuel traveled to Bethlehem and invited Jesse and his sons to a feast. When Samuel saw Jesse's son, Eliab, he thought, this must be the one that God has chosen. But God said, no, he is not the one. Eliab is handsome, but I don't judge someone by how he looks. I care about the heart. I care about what someone and how someone thinks and acts. So all of Jesse's sons here, they were big, they were strong, they were handsome. And God says, no not them. Samuel met six more brothers. God hasn't chose any of these, he told Jesse. Are all your sons here? Jesse sent for David, the youngest. And when David came in, God told Samuel, this is the one. Samuel poured oil over David's head as a sign that David would be the next king of Israel. Now, boys and girls, what does it mean? Well, God said to Samuel, I don't look at the outside. I look at the heart. What I care about is what people love in their hearts. And David, um, the Bible tells us, had a heart after God's own heart. He loved God and um, he did still make mistakes. He didn't get everything right all of the time, but David loved God. Okay, so what does it mean when we say that the Lord is our shepherd? Well, I have my sheep here this morning. Um, 
So have you ever seen sheep? Sheep are not very good at taking care of themselves. They can get into trouble really quickly. Sheep need a shepherd. Yesterday, we saw a sheep and it looked like it was stuck in the hedge. And so we had to walk around and see, could we help the sheep? And luckily enough, as soon as we got round to, um, to the hedge where the sheep was stuck, the farmer also came in um, to, uh, to the field. And as soon as the sheep saw the farmer in his tractor, he managed to wriggle himself out of the mess he'd gotten himself into and ran over to the farmer. Okay, sometimes people are like sheep. We um, can wander away, we can get lost, we can get ourselves into bother. We need a shepherd to look after us. David knew that God was um, his shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, he said. I have all that I need. And in Psalm 23, David talks about all of the good things that God has done for him and will keep on doing for him. And there's a lovely line in it um, that says, Even though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And that reminds me of the song that we sing in King's Kids. When I walk through the valley, I will not fear for you are my strength and my shield. You know, David, um, his life wasn't always easy, but he knew that God was taking care of him. God is our shepherd. We can trust him. And if we follow him, he will look after us and he will make sure that we have everything that we need. Okay, God has also provided a good shepherd in Jesus. And Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And if we want to hear God's voice, we read the Bible. If we want to hear what Jesus says, we can read the Bible. That is how God will speak to us and show us the right way and show us how we can follow him. Okay, so what happens next in the story of David? Well, even though David had been anointed as king, Saul ruled Israel until he died. One day when David went to see his brothers who were fighting in King Saul's army, David found himself in a giant sized battle. I wonder, can you guess what our story is going to be for next week? Mm -hmm. If you said David and Goliath, you would be right. Okay, boys and girls, the truth is that God cares and for people the way a shepherd cares for their sheep. And you know what? If we follow God, God will make sure that we have all that we need and we can trust him to be our shepherd. Do you remember Easter boys and girls, we learned that Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. We have an amazing God who wants to look after us. We should trust him and love him and follow him the way that David did. Boys and girls, thank you so much for listening. And um, yeah, let's just pray together. Father God, we are so thankful that we can trust you to be our shepherd, that we can trust you to lead us in the right way, and that we can trust you to be everything that we need. Please will you bless our boys and girls this morning. Please will you bless their wee families and everybody from church. And we trust that you are with us and that you will keep on looking after us. And um, thank you so much for loving us so very much. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, we're going to finish with Never Be Shaken because um, it's just such a wonderful song and such an encouragement that no matter what happens in life, we have God as our shepherd and um, we don't need to fear anything because he is our strength and shield. And so we will never, ever be shaken. We will hopefully chat to you again, God willing, next Sunday. Hope you have a lovely week. Summer holidays start on Wednesday. I will chat to you soon. Bye.